Right. Good evening, everybody, or good afternoon in <clears throat> good afternoon in uh, some places. Uh, this is Guru Tom Pena, and tonight we have a special episode, episode three, 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 and we're going to have our Grandmaster Bram Frank or Kuya Bram, and he's going to basically do a, a demo, and he's going to talk about uh, his um, lapu lapu and his desan goods. Okay. Basically, all his toys. All right, let's bring him in. Aha, I can see hey, it work. Hey, good evening. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How about you? I'm very good. For those of you who don't know, some of you may have seen him when he gets beat up or helps me teach classes. This is Quacky <laughs> James. And uh, so he's volunteered to, like he usually does, to let his hands get zapped. <laughs> and everything. Thanks for coming and helping, James. <laughs> no problem. It's yeah. So, okay. um, what would you like me to start with? Um, before we do that, Jim, let's say hi first for those who are who have tuned in. Hi, Terry, and hi, Robert. So, once again, guys, if basically, please smash the heart button and the like button. And if you're watching this podcast, please let us know where you are watching from. Say hi, and if you got any. A uh, question from uh, GM Bram Frank. Just put it in the comment box. All right. Okay. Now, uh, one of the reasons actually why we have this special um, episode with GM Brown and with with uh, with the crimp, with with the lapu lapus, with the with the desen goods is uh, if you don't know, guys, or every time we do have a raffle in FMA discussion to help other FMA instructors or to any kind of charity, J.M. Bram Frank, Kuya Bram, has always been generous in donating um, some of his um, toys, basically, as part of the prizes. So with that, we really do appreciate everything that you're doing for the FMA community, Kuya Bram. Thank you very much from the bottom of our heart in uh, the FMA discussion. You're, you're very welcome. And especially, you know, like with Jesse, you yeah. know, uh, you know, it. we all have to help each other. And the one thing I have that I'll, I'll value, of course, besides teaching, which, but, you know, the, the knives and the crimps are something that when they get them, it's not just they got a prize. It's something they can continue to do FMA. Yeah. No, they help the FMA. And by donating, I'm helping the FMA anyways. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Plus, Thanks. you forgot to mention part of it is you already know because you own a whole bunch of them. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I managed to. So yeah. when when I got to visit my brother uh, this February, um, in uh, in California, that's basically when I did my first uh, lot <laughs> I bought <laughs> from you. And then when my when my uh, niece came over here, I also got the desk and good. Yeah, but right. just to show them, guys, this is this is my first uh, lapu lapu from GM Bram. This I got here in the UK maybe about six, six, seven years ago during the British British uh, Council FMA Festival. And then from here, I got addicted. So when I saw that Kuya Bram actually expanded the style of knives and everything, I just have to get it. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate it. And the one you have in your hand, people go, why is it the LLC? And I go, it's not a limited license corporation. It means Lapu Lapu Corto. Yeah. And the first one was actually the Lapu Lapu, not Corto. It was a full size blade, and it came because this was my Lapu Lapu Abanico. Because I know you love the Abanico. Pardon me, I have a hard time oh, with yeah. this, you know, the camera. So when I made this for Recon and Delta, someone said, and I was said Well, I want to do something that's more Filipino, you know, flavored. Mm -hmm. So I did this, and this was the first one with a post and a hole indexing. Wow. And everyone, so you can see that even the post is dim. I said, that's too hard. But those stuck in my head. And after I did it, the very same one you held up, this is the prototype. that, And it has the just the dimple like you have. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, reversible. Yeah. But that shape was my tactical Persian, but sort of like a bolo shape that it was mm -hmm. a trailing edge. And over time, even though this is a magnum size, that's what it's evolved to on the new version. 
So it's bolo like in that trailing point. So it's a slicer. Yeah. It has there's the new version of post in a hole indexing, which allows, you know, obviously from forward to reverse yeah. grip. But because of it, a post, I can put my clip on the other side the other and the spoon clip where the spoon is yeah. actually pushes onto the post. So it grabs around your pocket. And again, if you can see the Much post better. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now the clips are, and of course, all of them are, you know, firearms ergonomic stuff. But I've carried that through. And even the old straight blades handles, when people go, why are, oh, it is finger grips. I said, no, no, it's a firearms mm. grab, even for especially the ones I did for Delta and Recon, because they're, people are used to that, a firearms grip. And, you know, that kind of stuff always, you know, I tried to carry it through. And people went, I don't, why are you working on that? Well, when I first did my very first one, I showed people what obviously makes it. Yes, it's a red one. Red is, you know, a safe trainer safety, drone. Yeah, safe, yeah. Um, you know, blue is a working tool like a Glock Sim gun and any other colors live. And, you know, for me, when I first showed people the idea of a Bramp, because I have a couple generations before this, people laughed. I mm -hmm. tried to show Remy. Mm -hmm. And I said, sir, he goes, oh, well, problem, it's a knife. I said, I know, but when it comes out of your pocket, sir, ah, wait a minute, that's why I have your hand. I can hammer it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that it comes up, and if someone's punching just lightly, I'm, I can be up here and protect my face, and all I want to do is not try to open it, whatever. I just let him run into it. You can see mm. that little pull back, and then I can start doing into the limb, but I can be here and let Kwaku damage his own hand and yeah. oh it's a dulo a dulo on steroids yeah exactly because a dulo a dulo i can't you know some of our neural and their uh you know caribou horns you got the natural curve yes and but this i have jimping so mm -hmm. the and the, mm -hmm. it's designed that that gross motor skill grab that yeah come up that when his hand is there when i come up onto his finger mm -hmm. It curls up on in. It also means I can be in the back of his hand. I can push it into the palm of his hand. Yeah. And I can rake with it. I can pinch with it. And, of course, because I own the pad, if I touch you, it's open. Like Remy saying, oh, if I touch you, you're cut already. So I come up, and I'm, I'm the fastest out of pocket to access. And, we're, you know, uh, people use the wave, you know, Ernie's wave, which is the fastest opening knife in the world. Because as soon as you pull it out of your pocket, it's open. Yeah, it's, it's open, yeah. But that means I have no options. Mm. And if it doesn't open, and I've seen it not open, because it doesn't open all the time. I've yeah, seen people trying to put it back true. in their pocket. That's true. And people, that's, yeah. true. that's true. But, but this, I don't care. I just come straight up. And if I can reach out, if I can touch you, mm. it's open. And if I touch it and I'm hammering, I let it go to reverse grip. Well, that's the, it doesn't matter. If I can touch you, it's open. And the other difference is when I finally patented my puzzle lock, mm -hmm. it's a dovetail joint of steel into the back of the blade. All so right. You yeah, 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 yeah. So, it, you know, it, it interlocks like a, a puzzle piece. Or, you know, the best joints in the world are Japanese dovetail joints you know they interlock they got to go out the way they come in my dad used to make them when he would do woodworking so all i did was do it out of steel and skyscrapers used to be able to you know the big girders mm, actually mm, locked mm. in place then we put the bolts through them people as a kid I used to think it just sat flat they put bolts and obviously that would slide they interlock then you put bolts in all the pyramids built that way the old palaces they're interlocking pieces and my mom used to be, do jigsaw puzzles you know, very expensive beveled edges, and they only go. And as a kid, to show how smart I was, he probably did it to his parents too. <laughs> I used to turn it around so you couldn't see the color and go, Look, Mike, I can put the puzzle together, which ripped all the color off because I forced the bevel in the wrong <laughs> yeah. way. But, anyways, with this, it actually throws the force down the tang arm because it's designed, yeah, even with half a skin, it won't break. It's a Marine Corps tested, you know, if the if the they can't break it. Nobody can break it.
but it's designed that all of our pet and it's only half a knife mm. you know all the stuff we need to do to be able to pass you know intercept and hit so yeah. i could be hitting kwaku and then i could use it as a pass and control and it's in there and i can mm. use it to redirect um because of the I shape know. i can use it to pick his arm up inside his elbow and i can move in yeah. and the training blade for a long time i used to take and you've probably seen them i would take my shape and make the shape the same as the actual cutter yeah and then i went ah that's not safe so i decided to find yeah the safest shape i could so i, I have eight different blade shapes mm -hmm. okay nine counting the training drum because this is the same so i don't care what which live blade you have this training blade goes with all my knives because from the bramp back they're identical yeah so you pick the part you like but the safest training blade shape ended up being this one which is why all the trainer drones are the same even the smaller version on the desk on good it's the same safest yeah because for I got Kwaku because he's a JKD and FMA guy. So he I finally got him, but and he'll tell you from the he's trained with other training knives. And he's become like you with Desan Good Freak. <laughs> he had a, the end of his Karambit stuff. We've corrupted him. But because <laughs> he comes from a, a group before he got to me, the Inosanta group, where he does training. Because and in FMA, we train in JKD, we train in a lot of new colleague groups, they train in the slot groups. We need more than a live blade, yeah. a safe trainer. Exactly. And, not, and so agree. this, people would do and said, we don't have to hit hard. The idea is that, yeah, we might get, but the idea is that it won't cut you. Yeah. It may hurt because it's not designed mm. for thrusting, but it's not going into someone. Yeah, exactly. And we can safely practice all of our moves, and especially exactly. with this one, I can yeah. be hammering, I can raking, I can get it, and I can follow yeah. You know all my my motions and that was most important for me and i think you know you and i talked about it last night when i first went with spider co i was at iwa in germany you know their big shot show and it's across from you know glock's booth and i had out a red gunting a blue I mean, gunting, the very mm -hmm. first crimped yeah you know that was blue and a black live blade because that's all they let me for color for live blades and I got to meet Gaston Glock because he came over, you know, it was an honor. And he went, oh, you know, we do this for safety. And I mm. said, sir, I get it. I'm a, a firearms guy. This is a red safe trainer. And I opened mm. up and said, see, it can't get cut, just like your red gun. He goes, what's that? And I said, oh, well, it's a non-lethal impact rescue tool. But it didn't have <laughs> rescue capability back then. But it's like your blue gun, a sim gun. It's mm. not safe to train with. It's a working tool. And that's what this has evolved into a specialized impact rescue tool. And I pulled a black one and said, they only let me have black. I don't have tan and, you know, <laughs> green and stuff like you guys. Goes, but, you know, any other color is a live blade. Yeah. yeah. And he went, oh, well, that's cool. And then I thought about it because we all went out to dinner. And we we're pulling different knives out. And, you know, in the, some lighting, you can't tell what color it is. And that's what, so on the new ones which you have some of the new ones. I have what I call vision impaired low light. There's see that single screw? Yeah. So rail system with my thumb, if it has a single button, it's my drone. Oh yeah. My safe yeah. training drone. And I, of course I came up with the term drone because drone means bees with no sting. Mm -hmm. And it actually gives you an emergency single screw because I figure on your training drone, we could be at our own dojo or someone else's, we're coming home. We're not somewhere out somewhere. Yeah. Well, on the crib, clever. There's two, part of a triangle. Yeah. So I, if as soon as I feel it, low light or my vision's appeared, I know I have a crimp in my hand, and it gives me an emergency two screws because I might be in a small deployment. I may not be going home, so mm -hmm. I have two emergency screws as well as it tells me what it is, and a live blade. Well, it makes a full triangle. It's fully loaded. So All I have right. three emergency okay. screws, but as soon as I feel that triangle inside my fingers, I know I have a live blade. In the live blade, That's... I might be out somewhere where I'm not coming home, and it gives me an emergency three screws. And I've told people to go, 
sir, I lost a screw. And I went, I don't use Loctite. You know, they're hand ground, hand assembled knives. I need you to, you know, mm. just, I said, do you check the screw? Do you check your gun? Yes. Do you clean your gun? Yes. You know, they check the screws on an airplane, every flight, tighten every screw up. Why? Because they vibrate yeah. loose. That there's not a lot of metal here. So, you know, when you're banging them, screws vibrate loose. Yeah, they, they do. And yeah. I've seen people who are missing their pivot screw, missing clip screws. And I notice it. I go, you're missing screws. And you're not. No, sir, I'm not. I'm like, actually, <laughs> yes, you are. They pull it up and go, sir. I said, well, for me, it makes me smile that it's that well engineered that missing the pivot, mm. missing other screws, they've been using it and don't even know it. But I tell people, you know, check your screws. And one guy said, I don't know what to do. I said, well, you know, you got three extra screws in your live plate. He goes, I thought they're for decoration. I said, no. <laughs> Those are your vision impaired low light. And because it's for that, it also gives you three emergency screws. You don't have to write them. You go, I lost the screw. Thought. It's, it's well thought of for you to do that as well. And you have, and this is what, because I was working with Terusker Messer, you know, it's got just that simple round mm. hole for the thong, you know, for paracord. Mm. I mm. couldn't fit a paracord through every knife. You can't fit paracord through there. It, it, there's no paracord small enough, really. And, yeah. of course, wherever the paracord goes, your knife yeah. goes. So yeah. on the new ones, oh, yeah. it's, a, it's an oval yeah. hole. Mm. So with the oval hole, wherever the paracord goes, your knife doesn't go. And the hole is big enough, you can actually put paracord in it. And what's different, and I learned over time, is everybody makes, if you hold your knives up, you can see they're open. Yeah. There's nothing there. You know me. Got to gotta re. Don't make changes unless they're for engineering. So there's a solid butt piece in all of my knives now. Uh. That solid piece of weight means it transfers the weight to your hand. So like a big custom mm. fighter, your weight's down here to take weight away from the blade so that mm. it can roll easier. But it also means, because we all do FMA, and we like to say that now I have a striker, yeah. a solid a piece nice, of it. Solid, yeah, for new. Yeah, and I'm one of the only ones who uses proud liners, meaning my liners stick out past the yeah. scale for my handle. Well, the butt piece, you can see, sticks out even past that. Yeah. So that means... And this is a Filipino bird's beak, and people go, "What's that?" And I go, "You know, I, I think, no, you know, it yeah. it comes from what comes off a classic Filipino blade, and this one is actually from the Presas family. Mm. That that piece is that same shape. Mm. So yeah. that when we would do grabbing with the butt, so that it comes in and I can grab him and lock him with the butt, and the bird's beak locks around him. Yeah. Mm. I can do the same bite. thing right here with that shape that allows me to grab. Only this one hurts more because it actually has teeth. You go, that one's spiky. But this mm. one actually hurts, and I can actually lock on fingers. I can come around and, and lock back because of the shape. And yeah. it fits. It. And when it fits in your hand, that's what gives you that additional grab. So if you go, you don't think about that all the time. I go, actually, it has. And you have some of your own. It's made to progress. And FMA is about flow mm. and understanding what do I deal with when what if happens. So with the what if, that's what helps as I design the knives, you know, what if. That's true. You know, and the crimp tool is because I really love doolowy doulos. I love pocket sticks. And one of my heroes uh, was the late, you know, Teddy Lukai Lukai. And Teddy, you know, always did, you know, when all the JKD guys were doing other stuff, he always did pocket stick stuff. Mm. You know, and he loved it. So I actually was on my way to go train with him on my way back. And he passed away on the weekend I was going out to train with him. And I actually went to a, an event where they had a big memorial to him. I said, what is this? I said, oh, uh, you know, he passed away. I said, no, you got the wrong name on there. I know his dad passed away a long time ago. I said, no, no, he just passed away. And I had to call up and go, oh, my God. You know, and that's how I got to meet, you know, Scott Brennan. You know, because Scott Brennan was Mr. Bally song, and he was from that whole group. And, um, you know, Mark Stewart is from that group. And Mark yeah. just got his 
knives from me and everything. But that's what helped me want to have a working pocket stick. People mm -hmm. still working stick. And I said, yeah. because people go, well, it looks like a knife. I go, that's because how human beings' hands are. So it's the most natural pocket stick. And this one, the crimped, cannot cut anyone. People go, those are stupid serrations. I said, they're not serrations. <laughs> they're jimping. And they it goes jimping, all yeah. the way around the blade so that I can actually use the back part to grab him. So our thrusting motion becomes a grabbing redirect motion as I come up. And it can't cut skin, but it, oh, it grabs yeah, fabric. Yeah, it bites. Yeah. 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 And I tell people, you know, and he's used to it. Walk a walk a walk a you know, bring, 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 bring. that because of the jimping, I actually ah, I can actually reach out. I'll be gentle. I can actually grab a finger. Can you get your finger out? No, no. And I'm trying not to crush his finger. I mean, he's very good about this because you know it hurts. Yeah, it does. But I tell people I can lock in. I can lock at different levels of it and grab mm. and redirect someone. And I reach out. All right, we're live. I'll say it. I happen to have an altercation with an uh, interpersonal, physical relationship with someone on one of my very first knives. And when I was doing it, I had never, it, way, way, very first knife, I had never done Waka Waka Pac-Man. So I'm being attacked. I'm under duress. I pulled the knife up, and my finger ended up on top of the bramp. And as it came at me, you know, I was struggling, came up, and I went, oh, and I caught and cut off his ring finger and his pinky finger. Went like that. And I got a real attitude adjustment. Because I was in panic. I couldn't get my knife open. It was stuck in my hand. And I just did it. And, of course, the rest of the team came over and cleaned up. You know, we took care of the bad guy. But it was one of those. And I said, oh, how'd you do that? And I was thinking about, hmm, I wonder how I did that. And I went in a whole night. I sat, and it was so hard for me. Now, even on a Magnum, I don't care what size I have, I teach Waka Waka because we go Waka Waka. <laughs> and because it's easy, it's in your hand, and rather than worrying about, did I get it all the way open? Yeah. And that led me to, because of the jimping, mm. what, if I use that, what could I do? Well, when I was little, my dad taught me about cutting casing on wire you know, with my little pocket knife yeah, yeah. and how not to cut through the casing and all the threads of the wire. Mm -hmm. And after I'd cut up enough pieces and cut all the way through, my dad taught me how to solder and put them back together again. But I wish my dad had been alive because I would have showed him that with the teeth, I can put something here and I can cut to a set depth and not, you can see it's hollow and not go yeah, all the yeah, way yeah. through. Um, I can do waka waka and I can do scissors cutting as i did like i reach out and yeah, catch yeah, yeah i can open it up just like the regular zip cutters yep and i can put it i used to use it to cut seat belts because i can put it against someone's body mm -hmm. and the blade is away and i can cut and cut down pants seat belts that kind of stuff and i started thinking oh uh, and i mean no offense to anyone tom already knows kwaku's gonna laugh because he really knows i hate the alleged Pakal edge in. It's like, oh, a okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So just so you know, it has nothing to do with the cat's claw. They've obviously never owned the cat because cat's claws sit on top of their hand and they don't pull in this way. They retract and pull out. Otherwise, the cat would be stuck. The only reason yeah. they get stuck is they flex their wrist. Yeah. And they go, what? So I, I know people like that. So I said, look, if you want to do it safely, picture here's edge in right it's edge into what mm. i'm cutting no i won't do this on quaku i'll use a trainer in a minute i can see him going you can't do that to me actually i could once <laughs> but i look at people and go waka waka works the same way so if i want to do edge in pakal trapping that's it mm. and if i cut and it pull oh, it safely shuts into the handle, which is where Waka Waka has that other advantage. The other thing for the bramp, people go, what does it do, especially on your fixed blades? Well, the bramp allows for rotation within your forearm 
not when people get on the back of the blade and use the tip. So if I'm on the side, well, now it rotates, and that means for proper cutting, for doing fillet work, I can now control it. And okay. now, I can, now I can control the tip just as well so that I can cut little pieces out because that's how I would cut it. And it fits like an old-fashioned mm -hmm. straight racer. So I'll just put this one down and everyone will see me that it's red. It's red. I'm not going to kill them. <laughs> that when I'm in here, it's a straight racer. So if I came up, I could be doing that fillet and doing that cut. I can mm -hmm. pass with it even because it's trapped between the bramp yeah. and my hand. And even though it's not locked in, oh, there it is. I can still slice with it. You can see it's not coming out of my hand. Mm. If I choose to be Waka Waka Pac-Man and stop him from moving away, well, you can see the edge is into him. That's the same as if I trapped him in here, but that's not safe for me because if I'm in here and Kwaku got his hand out and he went to put, ooh, huh, look at that's that. Exactly, yeah, exactly. He's yeah. safe. He's against the mm. back and he's pushing it right through my wrist. And I went, mm. oh, but if I'm in here doing that, Waka Waka Pac Man, mm. you know, and I get over him and we go and he goes to pull his hand away. Well, I'm saying, oh, I can put the bramp him in. You saw that? He doesn't want to grab yeah. that part because it's there. So it became a safer way to do, you know, what people, you, you, know, know, you, know, you know, we have Ram. The first time I saw this and the crimp, my, my, the word that came out of my mouth was this nasty, delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pity anybody was basically going to be on the receiving end of this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I mean. And if you think about it, when, when Shashir saw my very first one, Shashir and Akala, you know, Grandmaster Turtle. Um, Grandmaster Turtle saw the first one, and I hadn't really thought about it. He goes, Sir, because you know, you made the Bally song in the millennium, and I used to love Bally songs. He goes, because you can hit with it like a pocket stick. You can do like a ballet song, do little snap cuts. Mm. You can you get it open and not use it. And like a ballet song, you can shut it back down again. He goes, and you don't have to do all that flippy flippy. <laughs> so in that, you know, the crimped, when I didn't have a breaker cutter on it, it was an impact tool. And it was mm. in a lot of places, people what do you want an impact tool for? And impact tools... Some places become weapons. Yeah. This changes the game. Because this is designed to you know, take out windshields and side glass. Yes. I can yep. cut seatbelts and clothing. My rescue yep. guys use it. When I jimp the blade, so we can actually pick up people's limbs to check them. We can stick it in and take pockets out to check. We can run down someone's arm or leg, you know, to check to see what's in their pockets. We can put it behind the knee and walk someone down for a cuffing mm, position. Yeah, yeah, it became yeah. a rescue tool. And I grew up outside of New York. In the old days, we had reinforced glass. It was to keep people from coming into the schools and into the buildings. They had that wire in it. Of course, if you were stuck inside and needed to go break out, you were stuck. This, this is not a little razor blade, as you know. It's the mm. same steel yeah. as the blade. It's resharpenable. And who cares if to save your life, you dull mm. it out. I can cut those wires inside reinforced glass. People, well, we don't use it anymore. I said, I don't care. It was designed, though, in emergency. This yeah. thing is strong enough. I've broken down doors going in. Mm. Do I care if I kill it? No. It did what it's supposed to do. It saved my life. Yeah. And now when we use it as a doula way doula, and I'm in here, and once I'm open, well, he's already in world of hurt because I've got the ramp there running down his arm and then for me all i have to do is rotate and ah oh mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> you know that's why i say even with a fixed blade and once i've got that thumb mm. and then i go to shift it mm. well oh my elbow accidentally hit quaku in the chest i didn't mean to do that you know and and i know he this is what he loves and you were talking about it the other night at test run see if i give him the first time he put a Desan Gut in his hand and saw the new Bramp finger. And he gets, I know, because he'll if my hand's there, he'll grab me with that 
yeah. uh, Bram mm. Finger, mm. just like it's the breaker cutter on the, the crimp. Yeah. yeah. If I pick my hand up and he jabs me with that, with the breaker yeah. uh, cutter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's the same thing people are doing. I said, it's changed the whole game. Yeah. And it also means that in here, he can trap and pull me, mm. which I you can't do with a karambe. Mm. Everybody, mm. you know, they make all this really nice, smooth round. Well, none of this is smooth and round. That's why I have all the teeth. So, in all the creams as well, and, yeah. You know, this arc right here, oh, is actually the same arc, which is that same arc that we use in the Philippines. There's that arc. It's an imitation yeah. bird's beak. So that I can reach out, and if I go to reverse, well, now I can still mm. grab with it, poke with it, yeah, and that I can use it to trap and redirect. Yeah. And, oh, then flow right into yeah, no snag. Open, Actually, but... I, I find I find this really helpful, especially the moment you you hook this because you've yeah. got that some control. Yeah. Otherwise, it can basically like slip like this on other on on, on normal karambit. Yes. Now I'm gonna grab a. I forgot to grab one. It's right here. Go off camera for two seconds. I can't deal with the people who are in reverse grip and go. Oh look, I cut you. I do this. I said, have you ever cut anything? They go, what do you mean? I said, well, if it's between my fingers and hanging there, and I, ah, that's would yeah. you please do it? That hurts my finger. Would you flip it? Okay. Now, see, there's that flip, and if I push right here, yeah. you can see the look on his face, because guess what? Mm. If you're actually cut something. It's going to put a lot of pressure on, ah, on the fingers. Which, but now, with the Bramp finger picture, when I flip that out, if I let it go over, because there's two ways, over my knuckle, oh, look, I can cut. It's like brass knuckles. And mm -hmm. if I let it go between my fingers, oh, it's like a push dagger. Mm. And if I give it the Kwaku, I shouldn't because he loves carrying. He carries his death on good all the time. If he's got that out, he goes to cut me. Oh, look, he can actually cut me. He puts pressure there. Put it yeah. over your finger. Yeah. yeah. So now he's going to have it over his finger. And look, oh, yeah, he can still cut me. It doesn't break his finger. And to prove it, how about I do it on here, not on him. Oh, I can cut. That's between my fingers. If the brand finger is over, like brass knuckles when I put it out, oh, mm -hmm. wow, it stops it. So I said, what's a brand finger? I said, well, it solves an issue. I don't believe it. Not that you can't thunk someone, but anybody who's ever said, oh, I use a karambit, and I do that, I said, that's like kicking in the air and punching in the air. Yeah. Or swing and say, go, have you ever cut anything? Why? And Graciela used to laugh when she first met me to do my cutting stuff. She goes, Bram, I like you. You actually cut stuff. You don't cut in the air. I said, I know. And, you know, for me, I used to cut chickens and meat. And I was famous. You've seen them on YouTube. And even when I, in the UK, I build hands. Swim noodles give you the same consistency as flesh, and it's not as messy. Mm. And they're cheap. And I don't have to sterilize my knives. So I cut, you know, I cut swim noodles, I cut meat, I cut rope, I cut cans, I cut everything. But swim noodles are the best to practice on. And the Bramp finger changed everything. And, of course, my Bramp, the jimping, this ring, Bramp finger, is a whole ring set inside the ring. Yeah, it's it's With eight steadier. screws, yeah, it's and you nice can and see solid. it sticks out past the ring, which means, oh, I can grab with it. Unlike others. Hold on, hold on. This one, the fox one, I can actually get a, a full grab. Some of them, you know, when you pick up that karambit, you have to be in the ring. Yeah. Notice I can't find the locking liner because I don't know what it is. It's not one of mine. I may borrow that. Oh, well, he's got it. Kwaku can have his finger in the ring. He doesn't have to have his finger in the ring. He can have a full grip. Okay. And if he puts his finger in the ring... And pull goes all the way up. He can have a high grip. Yeah. So he's got three different grip positions he can have, and he doesn't necessarily have. 
Well, he just added a fourth. He can be around the outside. <laughs> this is what happens when you get wise asses who practice all the time. Like, sure. Did you know you can grab all the way up there? Too? It does because it's locked in. That's what I mean. He used to be a Karambit guy, and I'd look at him. And when he came, he has become a full and one of my best speakers for using a, a death on good because he uses it all the time, you know, in forward and reverse. And what I, you know, the bramp changes things because when we're reverse, it traps. Yes. If you have a blade that's 90 degree and curved, I watch, you watch mm. very famous people, they have to actually get their arm over there. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to use the arm. The risk yeah. So much. Yeah. 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 But yeah, go ahead. One thing I love about about the disengage um, and the bramp, uh, you know how people juggle. They'll juggle with the karambit, you know. I, I, and I don't like that. <laughs> I, I don't. However, if I want to show off and actually be flip, use some kind of flare with flare, the flip, tackle, yeah, which I, I don't uh, flailing. Yeah. Well, what we have is, like you said, it's a flail that mm. that bramp. I can actually I, now I can actually flip it effectively. And hit somebody, still grab, grab, and have the leverage yeah. to come back. And, and it's not pretty much better because you've yeah. got a good leverage. Yeah. Yeah. So you got so you got a, a heavy. Yeah, it's got a little war hammer sticking out right here. Mm -hmm. If you hit mm -hmm. somebody and then come back, and then when you come back, you flip it right yeah. back into it. Yeah, true. Because one of so, the things with the with, with the ring with the karambit is when you flail it, you have to really like squeeze. The ring. Yeah, yeah. So you've got better control. So with yeah. that one, yeah, because I've got that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Even with the fox one with the longer handle, that if I trade a flip, there's nothing to to stop the flail. Or there is no flip. Mm. And because it's curved, yeah, it doesn't grab. If I yeah. take our drone and do that on the back, oh, it's already it's grabbed. And oh, yeah. and the blade, it won't, it, oh, gee, it traps. <laughs> you know, and I look at people and go, look, I, I tried to make the tool better. Yeah. You know, okay, and, Jim, before yeah. we carry on, sorry. That's all right. To stop you there. Um, <clears throat> we've got a few more people saying hi. So we've got Frank Shikoski. Hi, guys. Uh, Paul is, Paul is uh, here. Good evening, Tom, Jim, Bram, Frank. Um, Brian Rodriguez said, how do we know this is the real Bram Frank and not the T-1000? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Hi. I'm one of the T-series with Kwaku James. I, I will come back. I was on this morning. Oh. Oh, Cafe Cubano. I can make Cafe No, I can't. take some food. But I can make Cafe. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. And then uh, Paul said, I really like the cream. Actually, I love I love the cream, Paul. Um, Brian said, oh, oh, God, Brian, don't get him started. <laughs> uh, Dean is on the house as well. Oh, uh, hope your swim is are close by <laughs> yeah. that's it. right uh okay then uh so you can use the trainer as a non-lethal edc as well that's a question from ryan well the problem with doing that is if you use your trainer as a non-lethal impact tool your brain starts to go, I can use a training tool for real, or maybe I can use a real tool for training. Mm. I don't allow that. And that's why mm. I came up with a crimp. It's a non-lethal mm. impact tool, rescue tool. Because if you care, and it's not that you can't beat the snot out of someone with a red trainer. You can, but it's not designed for that. And if you use it for that, well, you've used a training what the authorities and legal stuff would go, it's a training weapon. They'll forget mm -hmm. about the training part. <clears throat> we go, oh, and the problem I have is so why I've made them different colors and separated them is so people's brains don't make that transition of, I can carry a training tool safely to use for self-defense. Well, that also means like that the reverse of that becomes, well, I have a, my live blade with me. I can train safely. I just won't cut you. So all the places, and I've always hated that, 
which is why I invented training knives. You know, the idea of something that represented training knife, that, that was before me. But I am the first functional training. That's why Knives Illustrated called me the father of training knives. Because when I first wanted to make them, every mm -hmm. knife company said no. And I used to make training knives for Remy. I just gave one to Chad for his birthday. I made them out of wood. Well, I made an actual, just like I'm making a real knife, a solid piece, bonded handles on them, bonded a guard on them, ground them, and put grinds in them, and then started pouring them. And that's how I got to do stuff for Randall knives. And people used my dragon's tooth knives. Uh, that, that the handles were identical. And of course, the blades had to be thicker, but I made separate trainers so you wouldn't have that issue. This is done for security, our security and safety and liability. That if this is in someone's hand, Kwaku and I, you, Tom, as you're looking in your class, as long as I see red in their pocket, I know we're safe. Yeah. You know, I see any other color, I go get it off the floor. And when I'm out there, the reason this works is it's designed to be used because the trainer has a smooth blade. This is designed to grab. It'll grab and do stuff. It's a impact rescue tool. And because it's a rescue tool, a lot of people have windshield breakers. Well, you see the breakers. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you how to get the shards of glass out. Yeah, Windshields are true. laminate. That's to make sure we didn't go through the one piece and get killed. So you break the windshield, I can cut the laminate, I can, because of the teeth in here, yeah. which ah, hurts, I can yeah. reach out and grab those shards, I can break out side glass, I can move those pieces out of the way, I can actually hook and pull up a seatbelt and then cut it, stick the cutter in there, This and I can mm -hmm. redirect people with both sides of this blade, just ask that Tom Gallo and Ed Frawley who are crimp number one and crimp number two, like Dr. Seuss's thing one and thing two. They're my crimp guys. They follow because they do Kyushu Jitsu with it. They do yeah. all pressure points mm, with it, mm, rubs with it, mm, strikes and moves. Mm. Um, so yes, you can, but it violates one of my my tenants. And it's like I tell people, would you bring a red gun out on the street? Would you? You're a firearm instructor. Nope. <clears throat> this is one of the best firearm instructors I know. He would not carry a red gun on the street. He might carry a sim gun in extreme, I guess, if he shot me with a wax bullet, but I don't think he would. <laughs> but this, you know, is that the difference is where a sim gun, we're learning to shoot something, and actually it's not a safe trainer. It's a, a tool. This has been designed specifically to be our modern dulo a dulo. So, mm -hmm. no, I know you can carry it. I've told people don't. The only thing I do is, I cut this out of one piece with tack knife so we can, and I know Kwaku likes this one better. I do. We can actually do force on force, but I cut that same shape out of hard plastic. Okay. And I carry that on the plane with me. So it's more forgiving. <laughs> well, yeah, this is more forgiving because this is made for force and it comes open and closed version. But I was saying I carry one, cut this shape out of hard plastic and I put paint a duck's beak and eyes on it, and it's my DVT tool to carry on the plane. Mm. It's not anything. It's my DVT tool. And it's not, but it's like having a regular pocket stick. That yeah. I can do. But they're color-coded for a reason. As soon as you start violating color code recognition, like when I grew up, traffic lights weren't all the same. Mm. <clears throat> now, green is on the bottom, yellow's in the middle, red's on top. They used to be horizontal, that sometimes were only red and green. Sometimes the yellow was down below, below, believe it or not. And when I was growing up, traffic signs were not the same everywhere in the world. Now mm. we just have to recognize the shape. Yeah, the same. So yeah. red is a safe trainer. Blue is a rescue working tool. Any other color is a live blade, and I don't mix and match them. All right. Okay. Jim, there's a question here from Paul. Uh, what programs do you have to teach buyers for your crimp? And um, how long is the program? When I do a certification program, if you know you someone brought me in, I generally for use, not to teach. Use is generally for the departments and for people six hours. Six hours of training an eight hour day. If people want to do long distance, they can obviously zoom with me or on Bram Frank modulartraining.com yes mish came up with that because they wanted to explain what it was but bram frank modulartraining.com i have full certification courses of everything from crimped 
-hmm. to my modular training. You can learn sections of it. The crimp is the easiest one technically to learn. Um, I have five basic entries and then some lockups of what to do, of different finger control, whatever. And based on Dumag from Remy and from Wally J, Small Circle Jiu-Jitsu and Kyushu Jitsu from George Dillman. But the program itself is bramfrankmodulartraining.com. At bramfrank.pivotshare, like the pivot, pivotshare.com, all of my old videos – all my collections, my classic ones, my new ones, they're up there. You can, some are free. A lot of my seminars are videoed, you know, and on there, you get those free, free downloads. You can rent them or you can buy them. Oh, really? So that being, but a brand Frank module or just bring me in. But a full day when I teach the departments, a full day is eight hours plus lunch break and mandated breaks. So they have two hours of breaks you know, throughout the day in six hours training, a three hour block and a three hour block. <clears throat> what I, for my instructors, like if you wanted to become an instructor, the old saying was learn in six, teach in 12. You learn it in six. Give me another 12 hours after that. I'll make you a basic instructor. It's not rocket science, mm -hmm. but that's where they have it. And a crimp is still, when my mom saw it, I was out teaching in St. Louis and that whole thing happened in Ferguson. And I came home and my mom looked at me and she goes, oh, my God, I just got it. If they had had a crimp, Michael Brown wouldn't be dead. That idiot friend of his wouldn't be wouldn't have blamed the officer. They would have gone after him. He just done a strong armed robbery. That's why they were yeah. chasing him. You know, they could have just beat the snot out of him. That would have been it. And I mm -hmm. tell people in today's world, you know, if Kwaku's got his crimp and I attack him, uh, uh, oh, I was looking for a safe drone. Notice that hesitation. So <laughs> I've got a knife. I'm the deadly guy. Oh, we have to give you a, a blade for a minute. Put that down. I have to change my... <laughs> so he takes out his blade. I'm going to cut him. And he cuts me. Cut, cut. Ah! And then I complain or I'm dead. The guy defended himself. You saw like the guy defending in the bodega. Yeah. The good guy, Kwaku's going to jail. Mm. Now... He doesn't have mm. a live blade. He's got a crimp. I'm going to cut him. Oh, you're done. And he, ah, and he smacks me. Ow, ah. And I end up with bruises and beat up. Ah, and he got me trapped. I can go to the judge later and complain all I want with my bruises. And they go, weren't you trying to kill him? Well, maybe. You were trying to cut him. And they can look good. That's all you did was beat him up? That works. And... If I get, we're snuggle up because it's videoing, but he can pick this up. Everybody's got a camera. I, ah, <laughs> oh, camera. Jeez. Attitude adjustment. That hurts. Okay. That's, <laughs> but the idea is that with everybody's cameras today, everybody yeah. trying to make things look bad, he can be up close and personal. I know when, when he's on security, mm, mm. when he's got, and that's the advantage of my tools. We use them closed. So even if I have a live blade, I can use it. I don't have to open it. Mm. Why didn't I cut them? I didn't have to. How about if I just had to do a quick <clears throat> little snap, snap. Cut, right? <laughs> just to get them to move it's away. Like snapping turtle. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I come up. Well, forward or reverse grip, I can do it. And that's why I came up. They're the world's only full force continuum. And that's Filipino style. Mm -hmm. Can I go up the force continuum and, you know, good thing style? Can I go down? Good thing is a connotation of limb destruction, not scissoring, whatever. But using as that, I go up and down the force continuum. But the crimped, I cannot screw it up. Can I open up packages? Ask Grandmaster yes. Bruce too. Bruce uses the bramp and opens <laughs> packages. Um, he goes, Bram, I pop open oh. cans with it. You know, <laughs> he uses it all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I hammer with it. I care. I had an officer who was off duty. Um, he had played for a professional football, big guy, mm -hmm. and had very, very bad knees. So he didn't last very long playing professional football. Went to the local police department. <clears throat> so he's doing undercover work. And he's got one of the. He's got a crimp on him. So you know, no one, none of the bikers, the and, and all the gang bangers are paying any attention to him the whole time while he's on the bar truck. Comes out. And this comes out at night, and someone's peeing on the side of his truck. 
you know, one of the oh, drunk okay. so what are you doing? And of course he's undercover. And so they don't know, you know, it's an old beat up truck, but the guy just broke a bottle and turned right around. Didn't even bother zip up, stop it and came with a bottle. I did mention this guy used to play pro football. Yeah. He takes the, the crimp comes up. He looks at it, knocks the guy's hand out of the way and then hits him full force in the chest. Caves in the guy's chest. Guy just drops and calls me up and goes, well, the chief was happy, and I want you to know, boy, did that work really well. I went, okay. And if it guys go, sir, I wouldn't. Oh, some guy got attacked off duty with his wife, had the crimped, didn't go for his gun. He, I had, he goes, you've corrupted me. He grabbed the crimped and went right in, beat the snot out of the guy. The rest of the department got there. When he called him in, he goes, why didn't you shoot him? He goes, I didn't have to. Mm. He goes, I can't believe it. It really worked. And I had. I used to teach for CERT, um, you know, the corrections groups. And I had one guy in Las Vegas, Tom, biggest guy I ever met. I've told the story with Kwaku because Kwaku and I are about the same size. He's a little bigger. Yeah. We would both be looking at this guy's solar plexus. I mean, he was just this mass of flesh. We're mm. at a soldier fortune convention. And he looks at me and goes, I would never give you my hands. And that would never stop me. And he just came at me. Okay. And. I hit his hand when coming in and he went like that. <laughs> and then I hit him in the chest, got it there. And then gently, please. When you have it, you, sort of, <laughs> you know, that sort of straight punch, push, push, please. Ugh! Like that. But when I hit him, this is what the guy did. He went to push me away. And he, as he's falling to the floor, he's dragging his hand on my chest. And he looks right at me and goes, oh, God, Mr. Frank, I gave you my fingers. And I. Took his finger, put him into a finger lock, grabbed his thumb, and dropped him on the floor. Because he goes, Do it, can I buy those here? And my attorney <laughs> and flat belt, because uh, well, I work with a liability attorney who used to be a criminal attorney when I've done all this. He's been with me 30 years. Mm. So everything I say, it's been reviewed by a liability attorney all and right. the criminal, a former criminal attorney. And I said, See that guy over there? He goes, The bald one? I said, Yeah. And I waved, Peter. I said, you can go get it with him. And afterwards, he goes, you sent a bunch of officers over. He goes, I saw him. What'd you do? I said, I tapped him in the chest. I gave him an attitude adjustment. <laughs> but the crimp tool, my mom fell in love with it. Um, so every August, because that's her birthday month, you know, I, I push the crimp. I find the crimp to be the coolest tool. And Nick Spill, who wrote Way of the Bodyguard, uh, mm -hmm. and it, you know, for ESI and uh, uh, S2 is one of the chief. EP instructors, he fell in love with it. So he did the book, Way of the Body. I think it's on the horizontal on top in there. See if that's Nick's. Oh, there it is. Good. Okay. So here's Nick's book, Way of the Bodyguard. Uh, there's Nick. He's a former Kiwi and uh, um, SS type person. Um, SAS, that's it, not SS. But anyways, he looks at me and I'm just trying to find it in here. Where is it? You know, he he wrote a real nice thing, you know, that, you know, to the number one tool and knife guy I know, an edge weapon expert. And I used to work with him as uh, in the legal department of Metro Dade because I'm a subject matter expert. And he goes, did you read the book? And I read the little introduction that has a little thing, not what he wrote, but he wrote something in there about me. Yeah. thanking me for the crypt said yeah 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 and he goes you obviously didn't read it so i'm not really i you know it's a book i'm appreciating so i read the first couple chapters and he talks and then there's a chapter about how training with me changed what he does and how much he loves using the crimp what do i do <clears throat> so i thank him he goes you didn't read the book i said well i read that chapter he goes read the book <laughs> so i read the book it turns out there's a whole chapter about the crimp then there's all chapter about training with the crimp, and that's what he recommends for all his EP guys and all his protective services guys. And then I had actual at CENTCOM and SOCOM, the protective services guys read about it and said that's perfect. And they used it in Afghanistan, you know, guarding General Franks. Mm. And, you know, wow. they were actually able to use it. So what? Because in a lot of places where these guys can't carry firearms and can't carry live blades, they're able, even though it looks like, to, once they explain it, to carry a rescue tool. And they can't okay. get in trouble because they can't cut anybody. And uh, ah. David Mordecai, 
you know, had some people had tried it over in Spain. They were pushing and wrote what I've sent some people this beautiful article about the crimp and carry it and use it in Europe because it's a rescue tool. It's, it's a rescue not tool. a knife, mm -hmm. you know, and that if someone really came to harm you, you didn't harm the bad guy. Yeah. But you give it yeah. to any of us. I don't care what more. It's uh, less lethal. Yeah. Well, I had this. I was at a show and I had an old jujitsu guy come up with a whole bunch. It must have been a senior student sort of taking care of him. Like these guys do. When I go somewhere, you know, they, they watch out for me, take care of me and embarrasses the hell out of me. But I get it. You know, like we used to do for Remy. You know, we wouldn't let we'd all make sure nobody strange got near Remy and get him whatever he wanted. Anyways, this guy comes over to the table. Picks it up, looks at it, goes like this, grabs it, and starts. I haven't thought of it. Starts hitting, starts doing just like it's a Yuara tool because he was, yeah. you know, doing jujitsu. Looks at me, goes, you know, you ought to market that as it as an impact tool. It's like a great pocket stick. And I said, oh, was that self evident? He goes, yeah, it worked great. And a wife of one of the officers I know, <clears throat> he bought her a knife. So she's a prosecutor. So she ran off the court on her way to court before she dropped it off at the <clears> guard <throat> station. She got attacked. Mm -hmm. Now, she doesn't know how to use a knife. He'd give her a knife. She pulled that, you know, a live blade out, never got and hit the guy, beat the snot out of him, calls me up and goes, Bram, please don't be embarrassed. I never got the knife open. You know, and my husband never told me to do, but I took it up. You ought to market that as an impact tool. That guy came at me and I just beat him. And I went, I'm glad it was that self evident because it's a mm. hammer. Yeah. Any of it us is. can hammer. It's the greatest yeah. thing I came up with. Because mm. if mm. I, no, I'm not going to give that one to you. Or my crit here. If I said <laughs> hammer, he's going to go ahead and likely mm. hammer because guess what? He can't forget that. Yeah. That's a primary skill for human beings. And I tell people the wimp effect get away, get away, which no guy would admit to, get away, get, oh, that's hammering. Yeah. Even regular animals, we've seen birds that picks mm. up and hammer with sure. stuff. So if you're panicked, I tell people, what if I can't remember? Just hammer. I've had got people save their lives hammering. Mm. You know, and it's, <clears throat> what okay. I showed you, because remember you like the abanico, give me two seconds. All right, okay. Because I know how much you like the abanico, and I showed it last night, and you said, oh, we should talk about it. So this is what I did for Delta and Recon. And it's one of the coolest tactical fixed blades. And what I told you was the sharpest wedge. But you can see it's below the below the center yeah. line. Well, and you and I talked about it, that there's no arc. This is a trailing point. The tip never comes into consideration. This, the blade is actually offset. So that gives me a fake belly. It has a little mm -hmm. bit. And then it creates a wound channel. Yeah, because you have to pull that tip through, and it was a stunning tool. And lots, I'm gonna remake it hopefully with Tops knives. I'm trying to see if I get please Leo do, <laughs> please and, do. <laughs> but that's when I came up and working with Rob Newton, we made a four inch for our SWAT teams because they used to make that in seven and five inch. But this is a perfect <clears throat> concealment yeah, saw. That's but we were still, and then what I showed you, the prototype, which all of you will get to see now, is I decided to turn it for DEF GUN 5. And this is a prototype. And all of you know <clears throat> that I have that lower guard. Mm. And unlike most people, you know, this is a two-step guard, meaning that mm. there's a curve, there's and there's one curve, and then a second, second curve. And yeah. that's what we went to slide up. If it's one curve, your finger goes all the way out. But with a two-step, you get stuck, so you can't quite slide yeah. up the bottom. Well, I really like that, and that's on my abanicos, and I did that for you know, the soldiers. Well, the only way to get that lower that's guard nice. was I end up with a rear flipper. So yeah. it became my first rear flipper knife, and it's the same grind Brilliant. as the abanico. It's the abanico 2. Uh, of course, it has the, the front ramp for hitting. But what I showed people is because of that, the back flipper, if I went to strike a quacker when I got in between them, I can use that back yeah, flipper true. as a, a mini bramp finger. Yeah. And what I did, <clears throat> you and I were talking about the other night, is that I wanted something because it's uh, I wanted to be 
a military and law enforcement, a real or even a survival tool, that typical bram grip. Yeah. Well, I could slide up. It's a multi grip. I could come up. Oh, and that same my fingers fit around the next hump set at full grip, and I'm still below the guard. Yeah, I could go all the way true. up the guard, and it's designed mm. that if I you had to use it. two, yeah, I can have yeah. now, and I'm I'm not on the blade. Mm. It's not like I went up to the choil. I can actually get two hands in there if I actually had to use it. So I wanted something that would actually work. I extended and it has, of course, a crusher that's going to be a little bit bigger with a thong hole because it's a prototype. But that's the secret Abanico 2 folder, which will be a little easier wow. to carry than, than the full tongue. Then, you know, the, notice they're almost identical. Yeah. Then the four inch, because that's what I made it like. And of course, it's easier to carry than a, se a full oh, seven yeah. inch. Uh, seven what do you got area. that for? Um, I'm just walking around the street, no problem. And the, <laughs> you know, and the thing about the folder is, even though I'm technically designing, you know, military and police, martial arts, that's still a four-inch blade. That's it. Mm. And, I, and I'm going to make a matching trainer and a, a tanto blade and a spear point. But, like I said, all the people who like rear flippers, well, it has a rear flipper if they want it. And of course, typical Bram indexing and the rest of it. But that's for all the people love Abenico. Very much looking so forward. To go, Look, here's release. the next one coming. And the thing to do is call Fox Knives, which is in Italy. You know, they're they're big in Europe. Mm. Yeah, they are. Go, oh yeah, we can't wait. When Br where's Bram's Abenico two? I'm actually finishing the the final prototype. But you can harass Gabrielle at Fox <laughs> and uh, you know, and Diane at Defcon and go. We want the Abenico. We want the Albanico too. Is it anyway, coming that, out with a fox or with a black fox? Um, fox has another division. They bought DEFCON 5 as their military division. I see. Okay. And uh, Diane is in charge of that. So she, the, one of the first knives done for her was I was working this and COVID held it up. So Jared Wahongi's new knife is actually for DEFCON 5. And uses okay. my bramp. And of course, you know, Doug Marcaida uses my bramp and Bastion Bastinelli. Yeah, and those yeah, yeah. he's got fox knives, you know, the Blackbird, the Mako, yeah. um, Doug's new Karambits and stuff, and even the 511 Talon. Mm, the Talon know, the yeah. uses my lock yeah. and my, you know, uh, my bramp. Wow. Okay. Uh, we're going to let, let, let's see first the comments here. So, Andres Arias says hello from NJ. Michael. Stavely said, I carry mine all the time, sir. And Paul said, I hate to get hit by that crimp, especially on, on the face or the head. And then Alvin, first time I saw the drone being demonstrated by Dr. Jerome Barber, it was very impressive. Yeah. Cool. Um, then Paul said, I need to get that drone. It looks great. Okay. Uh, Michael again said, I probably missed the demo, but can we see those thumb locks with a crimp, please? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Paul commented, huh, gently, please. That's what they always say when you do demo, the Bram yeah. tools. Okay. Alvin said, Gia Medina also demonstrated the crimp on me. Very painful. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um Paul said, damn, damn, he asked me what I wanted before I went to Germany. I could have marketed that too. Okay. Well, he brought a crimp with him and he brought some live blades. I, I told him, I said, you know, the drone is our best friend. I know he couldn't survive other than that. And all, everyone has become part of my group. You know, people, no one made, tra when I've made the first trainers, Ernie started making trainers after that. People said, why? And he said, how else can we practice? You know, we used to, I watch people putting tape on them, people trying to cut them out of wood. People mm. are, you know, pretending it's on. I said, no, no, we need the real thing. It mm. needs to be exactly the same as what you do. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and Paul, if he wants to complain, all he's going to do is come back over the house because he only lives <laughs> on the street. Okay. Robert Small said, I can hear wife now. I need more knives. <laughs> and Leo Lucas, I have two yeah. of JM Bram's uh, knives. Love it. 
<clears throat> well, the whole idea of using the bramp to grab with, and it took me a long time to find the right, the proportion between the hole and the pivot is actually mm -hmm. the exact position of a rotation of your thumb. I'm sure you've tried some knives and you go to, you, you got to get, you the have right to like angle. fish it out. Open. Yeah. And this, yeah, this one is really easy. Yeah. It just fought and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's the small one, that does sound good. It's still that same arc. Mm. The arc is the same. So on this, what I also did was when we make a fist as a baby, when we go fetal, uh, when we're done gross motor skill, we roll our hands in. Mm. In. Okay, we're all like this. So that rolling motion cuts the arc off. And that's what this is. It's so I tell people I'm not pressing in, I'm actually rolling it. Mm. Okay. So it's when like I a roll scraping it, action. Yeah. Because the nerves are on either <clears throat> side. I had some Marines grab the guy in the back. They broke his thumb, but it didn't really stop him. But on the side, you saw the difference in mm, the jump. Mm, mm, and I said mm. it's the same thing on a finger. Yeah. That's the same thing on the back grab, right? That I can do it. And the bramp allows that if I come up to pick up a piece or pick up under inside his bicep and come up, I can be right there. Yeah. And if I take it into the palm of his hand, I get the reaction. So I can use, or, you know, when the guy's got that grab and we used to go use your knuckles, mm. you know, I can yeah, gently just, put the, yeah, the bramp in there. Sorry. Or I can put the butt in there to get a little reaction. And then I use the back, what I call the horns, like the horns of a caribou. And these are rounded. But mm. there's jimping on the back, as you know. So I can come up on the back. And that means I can come back down and, oh, I'm right there for the strike. Mm. Thank you for your hands. Yeah, yeah. You I, I just find myself like doing it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, Remy used to say that if you can make it hurt on yourself and it's not pleasant. Yeah, actually. Uh, people now, I will say I'm a very good ookie. I'm a very good dummy, but no, that stuff really, really, really hurts. Yeah, I, 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 I can see it. I can feel it, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's upset. Yeah. I mean, uh, working with some of the other tools, the crimp actually, or the, the, the jiving actually makes a big difference. Yeah, it does. And, you That's know, when I first made proud liners, people went, well, only some, a few custom makers did that. And they used to do it so your scale could expand and contract mm. and not, you know, like expand out and then you drop your knife and it breaks. There's always, you know, you had the steel there. I went, why can't I do that on a production knife? And I actually use full hard liners. You can have, uh, soft hard and full hard so i have full hard steel liners people i would use titanium titanium is not as tough as steel yeah. if i'm going to be constantly banging it and i want this piece to interlock without wearing off what do mm -hmm. i got to do well it's the same steel <clears throat> so that my lock mm -hmm. won't fail stays there yeah but i look at people i just was with chad and there was a woman there, Masha, very sweet. She hasn't trained with Chad in a long time, but does do jitsu and Aiki Jitsu and JKD and had done FMA with Chad. And it, Chad goes, demonstrate. So I went to lightly, lighter than I, I just was sort of reaching out. And she started screaming, oh, my God, that hurts. So I gave it to her. And I said, put it on my chest. Just give a little push. And she did. And she did a bunch. We all dropped going, ah. Uh. She goes, I didn't do it that hard. I go, that's the point. Yeah. People don't understand. It's a force multiplier. It's a, yeah, exactly. And I think you and I talked about <laughs> last night. And I don't want to forget. I don't have a ball detent. When people make pocket knives, they drill a hole, hammer a ball in there, scribe a piece there that's angled so that it holds it closed. And you slowly, as you pull it, the ball runs up a ramp mm. that's yeah. scribed. And the ramp gets narrow and narrow, the channel, until it pops out. Then your lock pops in. Yeah. My lock, there's the side piece. There's a lock cut, a puzzle piece cut on the back side. So the lock <clears throat> holds it closed and it's angled. And then when it opens, the lock goes fully into the back and yeah, holds well, it yeah. open. And you and I were talking about where places where locks are technically illegal. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's I've true. made my engineering, yeah, okay. any tool you get from the Bramp back, all my standard size are identical. If you get a Magnum, everything from the Bramp back, live blade or trainer, whatever, 
everybody's identical. Mm -hmm. So when you pick them in your hands, I don't have to transition. I don't have to think about it. But yeah. what I started doing was for engineering, because that is important to me. When I take this blade out, I've made a slip joint mm. blade for UK and Germany in places don't have a lock that the lock is into the side of the blade to hold it closed. And then when you open it, it goes a little deeper into the side of the back of the blade so that we would still be able to pull it yeah, for a bit, get it, a little yeah. trap motion. It won't just fold on us. <clears throat> yep. And in a court of law, if we really pushed it, it's a slip joint. It closed. And I don't have to do anything, but you'd come and go, Bram, I need a, a UK version. And I, the only change I make is I stick in the UK blade. I don't have to do any engineering. It's not a different knife. Everything's identical to your others yeah. because it's got a, you know, that's part of, you know, I patented five different versions of the lock because engineering is important. I noticed you got, you, it feels good. What, that's why I don't keep it over here with Kwaku. When we tell, he's like me. I sit there, you've seen him when I'm talking, I fondle them all the time. We play with them. And I tell people that's great because they feel right in your hand. Yeah. And I know you're right there. So clock is right there. <clears throat> it's no different. If you look at the position of my hand and you look at the position of my hand, finger and the trigger, they're mm -hmm. identical. <clears throat> You know, it's a fire grip, which is the bottom three fingers, my trigger finger, and my decock or my mag release. Mm -hmm. Well, what have I got? My fingers, as long as my fingers in the trigger here, this is a live blade. It's got a cutout. It can't. It may crush my finger, but it can't cut me. Yeah. Every other knife, when you undo the lock, people do all sorts of fancy holding and do whatever to undo their locks. When you undo one of mine, we're in a user position. It may be out of battery like a firearm, right? Yeah. But it's not out of a use, so I can do that decock back. I can rack the slide, or I get yeah. my fingers and drop the magazine because it's a firearm, and it's always in – oh, that's right. Oh, it's a hammer. It's always in a user position. People, what's important is that any other edge tool or knife, it's not in a user position. Mm -hmm. And people always – and I'm the only one – I'm one of 1%. I am not tip up. I am not a tip up knife. I am tip down. And I found that because when you pull it, people go, oh, on tip down, uh, a tip up rather, they reach deep into their pockets, <clears throat> the index, to then pull it out. So with one motion is in, two, three, turn it over, and then some kind of open, four mm -hmm. moves. If it's tip down, and mine stick gross motor scholar product, but you just grab it, you pull it up into your hand, one motion, two is I open it. So I cut out two steps. And with ours, I pull it out and I don't even bother to open it. One motion, it's up. And if I touch you, it's open. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Actually, that answers the question. Although I'm, it might be, I am, uh, this is from Alvin. I am more accustomed to carrying EDC folders with a tip up orientation when in my pocket would this orientation work for the crimp uh, no you don't because again if i do tip up my bramp is going to catch and your tools open and that violates mm -hmm. everything plus it's not if you have a little end that's a fine motor skill this sticks out of your pocket you can see where the, the clip is so when i grab it out of my pocket it's a gross motor skill i'm just into the web of my hand that I pick up. That's what I start making a fist. That's gross. I panic. I <laughs> panic. Comes up. And what do I want? First thing I want is a ball peen hammer. I don't want my tool open. I want to give you an attitude. I want to make sure I'm okay. And when I want it to open, it will. Ernie is tip up. Yeah. So it comes out and it's open. I have no choice, but as I said in the start, fastest opening tool around is using a wave. And waves are trademarked now. For me, I come up and I'm Cancerian. I'm a water. When do I want it to open and when do I want it to shut? Because you can't shut a regular knife down when you want. I can be in the flow of using one of mine. I can have it open and I can go ahead and. Yeah. 
I'm sorry. That was, you know, we're in the middle of the hurricane. It started. And that oh, was because we're on the I east learned. side. The east side always spawns tornadoes. So that was a tornado warning for us. Warning. Okay. So, uh, when you mentioned earlier on, it violates, it, carrying tip up, it violates. It violates everything. my belief of how we All use right, the tool. See. Okay. All right. Because I don't want it to be just so. I watch people who practice all the time, how fast can they get it out? And they have a, a wave. It's open out of my shirt. So they're open and they practice mm. poking someone's eyes, cutting throats, cutting mm. bellies. I said, you should, oh, I'm having a good time. Well, under duress, we don't get smart. We get stupid. Mm. You know, we go from fine mm. thought. There is no complex thought. I know people think they have it. Go right down the growth. And if you've practiced endlessly to get your tool open and poke someone's eyes out, cut their throat through, that's what you're going to do. Mm. This comes out and I do get away, get away. Okay. So um, let's say from the legal standpoint, would that have an advantage? Yeah, absolutely. Being, being scrutinized in, the, in court? Rather yeah, than that's, that's, that's why I said I work with a liability attorney and a criminal I attorney. Okay. Because if right. I come up, because I can do full force continuum with my red one, which represents a live one, that I can do non-lethal. I can do less than lethal. I can be in lethal mode, and I can still do non-lethal with mine in lethal mode. And then in the flow, shut it right back down to non-lethal. Okay. So I have full force continuum. Mm. So legally, I can pick what force I want to be at. Legally, when I come up, you know, Gary Johnson, a shooter's toolbox, went, oh, my God, you know, Bram's tools are just like a wrench, a leather and pliers. Till you actually open it, and it can't open accidentally, it's just a ball-peen hammer. Mm. And one thing none of us in security or police ever run into are gangbangers with ball-peen hammers. They're war hammers. So what did I give you? A war yeah. hammer. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you come at me with a gun or a knife or a big bat, and I'm in here using a little tiny impact tool. Oh, and in real, I'd be using my rescue tool, my impact rescue tool. That's much better legally. And that's why David and Mark and a few others, you know, yeah. have been over and over and going, oh, my God, we can carry this because it's non-lethal and it's yeah. not designed as a weapon. It's a rescue tool. Anybody else's impact tools are going to go, well, what do you use it for? Well, for self-defense. Well, you're not supposed to carry a tool for self-defense. Oh, well, while I this, it's not a self-defense tool. It can be. It's a rescue tool. Mm -hmm. I might have to. Why does it have that hammer? I might have to break out side glass or windshield. Yeah. I might have to break out windshields. I may have to cut cords and lines and save someone's life. Or, you know, the, the like flex cuffs, the uh, yeah. wire ties. You people tie people. I may yeah, have to cut, nice, yeah. you know, someone's tied up with duct tape. I may have to cut the duct tape. Mm -hmm. I may have to rescue someone to cut their shirt or their clothing to check them out. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. I cut someone? No. Well, I can, if I don't want to stick my hands in the blood or the parts, I can use this to gently look underneath and see, is there, is there a trip wire there? Mm -hmm. You know, is there a cut there? Is there a piece there that I don't want to move and it's going to go deeper or something? Do I want to stick my hand in and check your pockets? No. Some of the guys put extra grip tape on here. Frozen. Sorry, guys. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's just wait for GM Bram. Yeah, I think that 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 particular issue on the legality it's it's really important. Yeah. Because like what Jim Bram earlier said, like here in the UK, if you carry a tool for self-defense, that's a big no-no. I mean, maybe in some areas it's okay, but here you can get done for it. So <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, Paul.
I hope you guys are enjoying the conversation we had with GM Bram. If you have any question, especially like technical, how to use it, um, feel free. Yeah, Paul, I love this actually, especially this. Yeah. It's, I mean, for, for flailing. <laughs> That hammer is really painful. Yeah, and the the handle, you can actually hold the handle this so uh, this way. So sometimes when you try to draw things, uh, getting your index finger on the ring itself, sometimes it poses a problem. So you can just grab it like this. It's easier. Yeah, actually, that, that's that's true, Michael. Yeah, it's one of the things that I love with with uh, Bram Frank's um, Lapu Lapu Corto and the Crimp. Uh, they're quality made, but you you it's not as expensive as with the others. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it does. This not good. And you can get like a this type of blade or like a straighter one. Okay. <laughs> of course, man. <clears throat> I mean, I get it once in a while, so I have I have to make the most out of it. <laughs> yeah, and like you guys, you can always like get it from GM Bram. Oh, they're back! Yes. Oh, they're gone again. <laughs> yeah. After yeah, I love the. I love the beef. Yeah. Oh, that's nice, Michael. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I've got a trainer. I've got a trainer of the Desangot, the the uh, full tang one. Yeah. It's, it's really nice. It's like um, it's like a karambit in um, uh, in steroids. <laughs> Yeah, for those of so this is my first uh, Bram Frank LLC, and it comes with the Kydex as well. Yes, you're back, okay. GM. Yep, GM, Kuya Bram is so generous. Yeah, I just wanted that we lost power because of the storm. All of a sudden, it was totally black here. I had to wait for the modem to reboot and everything that's fine yeah. that's fine that's fine jim i just started like showing them all the well i you know for part that of i got it, from you at one point i could see you but we couldn't sign back on i actually had to go off and re-enter oh, yeah. so just i saw you all about how beefy you can <laughs> yeah that's a traditional and that was named because of edessa i used to call it yeah in 2000 the gunther rambit and spiderco didn't want it and they made uh, like a warren <laughs> thomas thing after that but over the years, Odessa wanted me to do so. I said, you know what? Because her nickname for me is Dessa. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> she's actually the last living by the Philippine government son good master. Because she went to study with a couple people. She came to me and said, what are you going to do? 
I said, well, everything you want to do is basically our modular system. Let's just yeah. give you the tools on yeah. good. And she used the regular Cebuano, a Filipino sign good, sound good, which are not yeah. karambits. You know, they're mm. forward work tools. And I tell people, like the one you have in your hand, traditional, that's that same shape. Even that yeah. drop of the point, that's the drop of the point there. That it's the same. And the idea is it's a forward tool. And all of my tools, I'm like a grunt, work in a forward grip. And yes, you can go to reverse grip. But Odessa saw that and she goes, can you, how about I redo it, fix it up? And it took me 20 years to really come up with everything. But it became the Dess on good. And this one I did for her and her husband in the Ra German Ranger Battalion. And this was the first fixed blade version. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's got indexing so I can still go and grab. And people said, oh, that's really cool. And I didn't have, I did this first and I went back and worked on it and worked on it. And that's when I finished up this version of the folder, which you have. And that's when he added the Bramp finger and Odessa bought two boxes of them to take back to Iraq and to teach the Kurdish women because she went, Oh my God. Wow. It's literally. <clears throat> oh yeah. She went way you made me on steroids, but that's how we got the name. Des San good for Odessa Ramos, senior master Odessa Ramos. Who, like I said, she's one of the considered the last living son good masters because nobody takes the old farm tools and uses them for martial arts anymore because it's a modern era. Yeah, exactly. You know, but that's where the whole thing came up to. And as much as I dislike Karambits because of everything, I and this one and Michael and who said, sir, you're going to really fall in love with your desk on good. I'm like, no, I won't. You guys can all fall in love with it. <laughs> and they all see me playing with it all the time. And the reason I made the two other blade shapes is sometimes for everyday use, <clears throat> a <throat> buoy, a little buoy blade is, or a spear point is a little more practical. And I don't have the typical Karambit 90 degree blade out of the handle. Yeah. They're actually, in position, yeah, because not everybody no fancies the than my the, regular mm, tools. Yeah, they're forward grip tools. People go in and said, "I try engineering wise to fit everything together." That you carry one of my desks on goods, and he'll he carries all that. It's a practical tool. It's not just mm. oh, I do flippy whippies in my hand with it. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I've seen that with with some of the. Karambit players, or is, yeah, those who practice. Yeah, I was like, it doesn't have any value. <laughs> I know. Well, and you've seen them, and I, I see these guys showing how fast they can flip it out, and they're doing stuff and twirling <laughs> around, and I'm like, and you've you've probably heard me. I got a couple people who I look at them and go, "What are you doing?" And they explain some Filipino terminology that I've never heard of before. Go, mm -hmm. no, no, what are you doing? And they go on, and I said, no. What is that tool supposed to be doing when you do that? Mm, Go, mm. what do you mean? Well, I'm flipping it out. I said, yeah, I saw that. But with all that fancy flip, it, what, what are you doing? I mean, you're flacking someone in a, that round blade or <laughs> the blade, which is, hold on, it's 90 degree off and it's sliding by. Mm, what are you doing? Mm. And I watch people have live blades that are rounded like a, a worn cliff or a sheep's head. Yeah. And they're doing this kind of thrusting. So Kwaku's going to entertain you for two seconds while I get All right, okay. my blade that has a round. <laughs> I have been entertained. <laughs> Great. I get to entertain you guys. So it's funny because I even carry it um, clothes this way uh, and with the bramp. And I, I could extend out, still open mm. up the blade, and still come right back. I mean, it's just it, this is just a, such an amazing tool. It's ridiculous, and that does some good. I yeah, it's a it's a sound good. You know, it's not a karambit, mm. but I, I feel you guys a karambit. It's, it's and, still, and it's that's what I best. mean. He's the coolest thing for me is Kwaku didn't need me. I mean, he needs me overall, like a, a hole in the head, because he, he's got years of training on his own. And it came, and he, you know, he used to be one of my the main guys who paid attention to me when I taught at the shooting academy across the street. And here, mm -hmm. 
And the more he played with the desks on good. And he's a, he was a karambit guy. And he yeah. has some very expensive karambits. And I feel bad because he's sitting in a drawer now because he's become a desk sign good person. I don't. <laughs> but what I wanted to show you was this is a santuku, you know, a chef knife. And it's got that right yeah. now. Watch people doing this. I said, what are you doing? They go, oh, arcing <clears throat> thrust. I said, there's no such thing as an arcing thrust because if you actually got it stuck in there, you're going to break the tip off. But yes. you, they have rounded backs. And I'm like, well, well what are you doing? Well, you know, no, that motion. I go, but what does that motion do? And they're like, I don't get what you mean. I said, well, you got to learn. You don't use a hammer to drive in screws. And you yeah. don't use a screwdriver to hammer in nails. That's true. That's if you have a round the back, if that's the motion you're doing, and I watch them, they're doing reverse grip like this. And I go, what is that doing? They go cutting. I go, no, it's not. I would yeah. have to tuck it all the way back here so that I bring mm. that edge into play. Mm. And they're like, what do you mean? And I said, well, that's different. You know, if I'm doing that, oh, that's right. I have an edge there. Oh, it works. Why? Because I bring an edge into play and they're arcing. It's like being on a cutting board. And I'm doing a chef cut. Yeah. Or a slice cut. So I'm doing an arcing chef cut. I'm not trying to stick it in and C cut and snap the tip of my blade off. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to stick it through your ribs. I get in and oh, that's my slice. It's just I turn the position here. Yeah. And I'm cutting here. And I'm using that edge to cut with. I'm not stabbing you. People see something and think they know what's going on. So they translate it, and that's a telephone game. You know, yeah. the, the white yeah. horse with the red cart becomes the purple dragon in the gilded chariot by the time you get around the room because everybody adds what they think they knew. Yeah. And I, I try to avoid that. You know, and I wanted to show you, you know what, I think you and I talked about that. You know, I named everything after the Philippines. Oh, thank you. So this one, which hasn't been made yet, this is the new Redonda series. And I did them for the Marine Corps. And, you know, Redonda being circles, this one is designed that it really wants that blade to roll. And that's what Redonda is, those yeah. circles. And, you know, if I've never seen it, it, it wants a cut, but you wow. can feel it wants to come up and roll. This is the first time I've ever gotten this. He's talked about it. I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it. This is the first time I've seen it. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Yeah, it's, see, it wants to roll. It's kind of front heavy, so mm -hmm. the, the, the 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 top the blade leads. Yeah, but it's not too front heavy where where you, you don't, don't have, have any control. control. Yeah, right. So it's just I mean it's it's uh I want it. Yeah, I, really, <laughs> I want it. Yes. So that became the next word because the abanico fanning and light. There's no question because you've had an abanico in your hand. This one is. Oh, yeah, I've held it. This is light. I want, and I want to put that tip in, but it's two different kind of configurations. Mm. And this is not sharp. On the final military one, it will be. But even that, I think I told you when I first did this one, Tom, because this one, I like to snap abanico. <laughs> I needed this back swedge, which is sharp, mm. and this is razor mm. sharp, that yeah. this angle. But because of the angle of your wrist becomes the same blade angulation from a forward or a back cut that I use this. See, it's not razor sharp. You can see it's cutting. Yeah. But yeah. this side, and what you get is this back false edge, which <clears throat> you can hear it on my yeah. nail is sharp but not very sharp and it creates drag so when i go to thrust it pulls that creates pulls drag in. friction yeah. it pulls yeah, that yeah, front yeah. edge in yeah and this is still the, one of the best cutters i've ever made but when i get that other from kwaku what i did was this is what i consider a deep belly buoy so that the belly comes into play and that it <laughs> Wow. And a three piece. And that's again my version of a bird's beak. Mm. 
for trapping and for crushing. And of course, yes, it's Jim all in here because we, and it's Jim back in here. So, oh, that's still my trap. Mm. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got it. That's that's gonna be my line as well when it comes into production. Yes. <laughs> well, I just had some people and I get it and I have to smile because they go, Sir, I hate you. I said, Okay. I hate your knives. I said, Why? And you go, because I have a whole drawer filled with custom two hundred to a thousand dollars each knives and I don't touch them. I look at them and I pick up your knife and go, Oh, this won't do with one of the LLC. I'll just carry the LLC. And I want you to know when I make them here, <clears throat> if you wanted to make them here, you know, it's between eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars each. I use better stuff. There's only five of us in my little company. We hand grind them, hand assemble them, hand cut them, and we, uh, you know, I can retail them for one twenty-five. You know, the standard. I can yeah. retail the magnums for one forty-five. And you go, what? I said, look. Um, my family in China, because they're my extended family, I've known them since 2005. You know, and I go over, I eat with them, I stay at their homes. And Shin, who does the grinding, her, her father grew up making swords. <clears throat> and she sits there and we, we hand grind them and everything, because I don't go sit there anymore. But, you know, I've tried a few yeah. times. But, you know, all the stuff, we make our own screws. It's my own G10. And I try to, get, it's my name on it. People go, you could make them cheaper. I make very little profit. People go, oh, sir, you know, you the company said you could sell them, you know, use cheaper products. You could, you know, make them cheaply, not less inexpensively. Yeah. And sell them. I said, not with my name on them. Mm. You know, mm. I want to make hard use tools. Mm. And I want to know that if your mm. life depends on it. I just talked with uh, Stephanie Lee because you you had her on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So because she's with Roger, she's getting a, a, a set of knives. And she wants to, she's going to use the crimp for her underwater stuff. She goes, oh, my God, it's a line cutter and it won't accidentally get cut. And I can use the blade to pry coral carefully mm. and not a sharp blade and break it. I said, yeah. yeah. I said, look, they're made out of stainless steel. They're 56 to 58 Rockwell hardness. And I had a Navy SEAL who dropped one of the old ones like you have. Actually, a first run, the military ones, off the edge of his dock. It sat in salt water for a week. Mm -hmm. And when he found it, it barely had specks of rust on it. He sent it to me, and I cleaned it all wow. up, put it out. And I sent it back because you sent me a new one. You had a new old style. I said, no, that's yours. I cleaned it because you're kidding. And Crocker, I have a, a cutting dummy outside as well as my fighting man dummy. Yeah. And granted, it's screened in, so it's not direct rain. But they've been sitting out there all of COVID. The hand, the fake hand is holding my knives. You know, <clears throat> my real trainers, there's – Little tiny flecks are and they're sitting outside in the humidity and out in the rain. And I tell people they're they're like any kitchen good stainless kitchen knife, in the sense that you can leave mm. them and don't dry them or take care of them. Of course, they'll stain over time. It's it's yeah. got carbon in them. But yeah, and I told Stephanie she's going to go try them and write an article about it. Try it, mm. and she goes. I said just when you're done, when you're done, wash it off. You know, yeah. lubricate it again. She went okay. And Kwaku was kind enough to drive me up to uh, Conrad Bowie's and Patrick Vaughn's and Tim McWelsh's weekend warrior survival camp. And Tim used one of the buoys, you know, the folding buoys, and afterwards said, this is the best mm. survival tool I've ever used. I said, oh, mm. I'm glad. So he's going to try to write something for off-grid. Patrick and Conrad fell in love because they write for recoil as well, fell in love with the knives going, oh, my God, they let you do FMA perfectly. I went, right. What makes up me, what I believe in FMA and my modular system is what resides. It's manifested in my tools. Mm -hmm. So I want something that will make yours and your FMA and your martial arts better because the mm -hmm. tool lets you do it. The tool doesn't yeah, prohibit you. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> I forgot to mention, uh, yeah, actually, because of the steel yeah. uh, protruding out and the jimmying, even though your hand is actually um, wet or has yeah. uh, is basically has fluid or something in it, 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 it's actually still safe on the hands. Yeah, absolutely. It's, unlike some of the other blades, it kind of like slide against the G10. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and 
I mm. actually licensed the G10 to some other people because you can feel it's sort of grippy, but it's not. Mm. It doesn't rip your hand up. And I yeah. tell people that when you hold it like a firearm, that your middle finger goes over the hump and your other two fingers go on the bottom. And I just barely hold it in what people call a cancer grip. If I ask Kwaku just to pull this out of my hand, oh, it's not yeah. coming out of my hand, and he's pulling. Mm. People go, what's that? And I said, well, by the time I lock it in like a firearm, and I'm still not using my, because there's my trigger finger, it can't go anywhere. Yeah. And same thing, you notice in reverse grip, people have to cap it so they don't yeah. slide on the blade. Well, I only need two fingers. If the Bramp locks it in. I have three fingers I can grab. So my tool allows you to use your fingers, your thumb, mm. my trigger finger and thumb. So that's why we get those grabs. And you're right. I wanted something with the proud liners mm. and the jimping that are also under duress. The back is smooth. If yeah, exactly. you can't tell some of your, your eyes, you could tell immediately where the edge is. Why? Mm. Because the jimping is where your fingers go. Yeah, it's. I like the way you basically like thought about everything. Yeah, with 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 the design. I I try. Now, <clears throat> a long time ago, um, Alan Blade, who's a stunning knife maker, he actually made the not the Almar Warrior, but when Bob Taylor made the Hobbit Warrior, the little one, which of course right. got in big trouble because he called the Hobbit and the Zarkov and Tolkien people shut him down. Um, but he's the one who came up and actually handmade all of these. And Alan's an old friend. And he goes, Bram, I, I really like that, what we call a banana Persian shape. And mm -hmm. that's what Michael Achanis had used. And then Bob Taylor brought it to Almar and made the warrior. And then Bob did that. Well, a little while ago, I worked with Alan on a collaboration. And we made a thinner but wider handle with Bram. And it's my first primary reverse grip tool. All right. With that nice banana blade. And of course, indexing. And I tell people when they pick it, they go, it feels good, but it's not great. I said, I know it actually it feels really good. But like I said, it's a reverse grip. The first <clears throat> one, because Alan likes them. And in reverse grip, mm -hmm. it's stunning. Uh, that's how what happened last time we lost power. That was tornado warnings again. Because like, so All right, okay. So I'm going to give it to Kwaku because he hasn't really played with it. So in forward grip, it's good. Yeah. Now put it in re reverse grip. Reverse grip, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, and it's one of the first, re and while he's showing playing that, you can tell you feel that. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a reverse grip person. I, I love Picard grip. I, I just do. And this is perfect. This is great. So many years ago, I made this. This is out of, uh, a ceramic plastic. You say even drew the lock on there to see where the lock All right, would go. Okay. It's just a prototype. And my indexing is actually a groove cut to the hole. So it pulls you down in there. Mm -hmm. But it, it's this is actually my very first reverse grip. And when Alan saw that, that's how we started working on this. All right. Between okay. what he did with Bob and what I did, we did a collaboration. Yeah. Same thing, I'll give it to Kwaku. It feels it's good in your hand forward, but in reverse grip. Someone said, Why? I said, Because I know people like reverse grip and I want to give them a Bram knife that most of mine are forward mm. grip primary and work great in reverse grip. I tried my best. Mm. This is the first time I did the other. It's good in forward grip, it's absolutely <clears throat> stunning in reverse grip. And that's what led to. You know what I do, and I'm real big on ergonomics. And other people, I have them go, "Oh, look at that cool blade shape." I don't give a damn about the blade shape. <laughs> I mean, I do. I make eight different blade shapes based on you know classical shapes. Yeah. So if someone goes to my site, you get to pick what color handle. Yes. You know, digi cami, tan, black, and I still have some models that have my favorite, my red checked with pearl, because that's wow. from the car guy. Because you know we put pearl in paint. So my yes. frames on my all my street rides had pearl in it, so you, you look through it. So the pearl on the handles means they change color. And then I tell people, <laughs> just like anything else, you pick your favorite blade shape because from the mm, functional mm. part, all the ramp back, yeah, all my all all magnums thing. are the same, all stands. Yeah. So you get to pick 
people go, what shape should I get? I said, I don't know. What appeals to you? You know, and I tell people, they go, are they the same? I said, you know what? When I put them bramp the bit, bramp the bramp, all the Persian, oh, look how long that Persian is because it looks long mm -hmm. compared to the buoy. Oh, it's, oh, they're the identical. Same. It's mm -hmm. optical illusion. I've had people go, mm -hmm. they're all the same. Yes. All my four inch are four inch. All my three inch are three inch. You know, and, and I think about that because I got that from Porsche. All you right. know, they only make engineering changes. People go, well, they, they, you know, a 911 looks like a 911. I don't know what the code is now, 969, 97. Who knows what the internal <laughs> codes are? To all of us, they're still 911s. All 356 bathtubs look the same, and then they became 911s. Well, 911s, there's subtle changes sometimes on a body shape. But Porsche does not change what works unless they make yeah. an engineering change. Yeah, if we okay. need to make an in so on my stuff, people go, what'd you do? I said, I don't care. Lots of knife companies change the handles. You know, the knives don't match up. Well, with me, I only make engineering changes. All so right. you have on the first one. Well, I had to make the indexing better. By making the indexing better, it solved the problem of I can move the clip to the other side. I oh, okay. need a solid butt piece. I don't like that open space. Well, how do I do that? Oh, so I went ahead and made an engineering change. And this piece here, is actually identical to the crimped piece, just with the cutter not on it. So if I really wanted to, the breaker cutter would fit inside any of my regular knives because it's modular, like my training system. Yeah. Everything's the same. The I had to work out the engineering. People want to go, engineering is the most important part because as long as the tool fits properly, then people will use it. If exactly. you have to readapt to every tool in your pocket, <clears throat> don't mind the thunder and the cat running in there, cat Thor because they freaked <laughs> out. Um, you know, I want everything to be the same. You shouldn't have to change your you know how you grab something how you think about something every time and reorient it should be any of my tools you pick yeah. up are the same and especially because i deal with firearms and i deal with actual firearms instructors i want to make sure that when he picks it up all of my tools tell him oh the index is the same yeah my ergonomics are the same so i don't have to go from what do we do with my firearm oh i went from my firearm to oh I crimped, and it took me 30 years to get one into Grandmaster Bruce Chu's hands. I mean, he's my brother. His son only knows me as Uncle Bram. And his son, Chris, took to it right away and said, Dad, try it. He finally put a fixed blade in his butt, in his hand and goes, you know I don't like knives. I, wow, yeah. it feels like my 1911 because he's a 1911 <laughs> shooter. And so for the past year and a half, I can't get it out of his hand. So now he has <laughs> several of them and goes, you never told me they were firearms pieces. I'm thinking, Bruce, I've known you for 30-something years. Of course I've told you. He goes, well, I just wasn't listening because as soon as I got the knife, his brain just shut off. <laughs> and you know, you know what I talked the other night? Dan Anderson, when I met him, way, way back, um, you know, 70, uh, da, 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 76, you know, from because I used to be with uh, Mid America Karate, and Dan was a competitor, and he, I knew him before he knew me. And he actually was one who got me started in Modern East because he and Fred King were always talking about Remy. Dan was not a knife guy, and he was like a single stick guy. Well, over time, you've seen Dan has become the, the uh, repository for writing books mm -hmm. in the library of Modern Arnese and really researching. I've been blessed that he's one of my best friends in the world. And he took to my knives and to mm -hmm. me doing, you know, Presas Bolo. And he comes in and goes, you've changed my life. And I said, well, you've changed mine. But the addition of it, and he said, Bram, it feels so natural to put it in my hand. And I love your module. You know, my modular program is based on my original biomechanical shutdown that I did long before I had my own knife of, you know, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Mm -hmm. You know, the Black Knight syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah, hands yeah. don't work. You know, very simple in that because people talk about mm -hmm. defanging the snake, but they don't know what they're doing. So mm -hmm. biomechanical shutdown, I show you certain muscle groups that you can target because you can't hide them. They're right there. And if someone exactly. can't use their hands, that means you can't pull the trigger, you can't grab them, you mm -hmm. can't hold the tool. 
And it also means you can't, more importantly for guys I deal with, you can't pull a yeah. detonator, you know, for the terrorists. And as Dan started doing, he goes, you know, your tools, and Dan carries my tools. He even taught a bolo seminar. But, and over time, I got more and more. So I've got Bruce, and, you know, I, I think it's last night. I hate Tappy Tappy because you got to grab the, the stick. And Remy used to laugh because Remy gave me a choice of bolo or stick. And, you know, told me all the reasons I shouldn't do bolo, <clears throat> I shouldn't do knife. But his family taught military bolo. But if I didn't want to do it, I didn't. And it was a test, I guess. I said, well, I'd rather do that. No one else wanted to do it. No one paid attention to me. So when they did Tappy Tappy, you know, if you grab the blade, your fingers are coming off. So I don't exactly. I don't read the <clears throat> Exactly. And Tappy Tappy is, you know, a counter for it's a great drill. As Remy said, stick is the beauty of the art. Anyways, so years go on. When I go to do knife, all my guys I grew up with, you know, Chad and Bruce and Roland and Dan, in the old days ago, we just don't want to do that. Go, but it's a knife. And then they go, You wanted some tappy tappy with some go. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. And I really didn't pay attention. So at a seminar, I'm doing something, and Bruce out of nowhere stops and goes, oh, my God, you lied to us. You do tappy-tappy with a knife. And I go, no, I don't, because I don't know the tappy-tappy. I won't do it. <laughs> got and I watch them, and they're watching me. I said, oh, my God. They go, you just don't grab the tool. You change around and go, but you're mm. doing the same motions. I went, oh, my God, I guess I am. And Brian, Brian Zalinski, who I, and Roland, through some of the best tappy-tappies, they're playing around. They go, Oh my God, you do exactly what we do with a blade. As soon as you said blade, our brain went, eh. And we know we said <laughs> tappy tappy to you, your brain went, eh. And I just never paid attention. So we all joke and feed off each other now. And Chad fit into both groups. And he yeah. laughs and goes, I tried telling you, I just wasn't listening. So, <laughs> um, we had a flow drill that we did with Remy, and someone cuts, someone cuts a one. And I intercept it and I pass it. When he feeds a two, I intercept it and that and I pass it. Mm -hmm. Right? And three comes in, I intercept it and I pass it. And four, same thing. I intercept and I pass it. Six of five, same thing. And then he comes with a twelve. So my modular system is based on those strikes. I mean, what about the other though? I don't need okay. them. That's what I talked about the other night. A five and a twelve are that same line. Yeah. So it gives me high umbrella or low umbrella. And I have three patterns of I uh, cut a one, a four, and a twelve. So there's one triangle. I do what most sombratas don't do. I have a backside because human beings at six of two, three, twelve. There's one, and then one, two, two over the arm. But everyone goes, "What do you do?" And I said, "Well, my blades and my modular are just Remy stuff." And as Remy say, "Oh, Brahma, you supercharged my niece. You found the better way to teach it." What you and I talked about last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Not, I didn't change this style. Um, I didn't change the system. As Remy said, I found the training methodology. And, you yeah. know, when Edgar Solite was alive, Guru Dan has access to everyone said, why'd you bring this kid in? And you look at all the videos when Edgar was alive and Dan talked about him. Dan Inosanto went, I brought him in because he's got a great training progression. Mm. You know, how you teach it is important. Yeah. You can have the best stuff in the world if you can't teach it. And exactly. be it Guru Dan or Remy, when they get something in their head, they go, oh, well, you can do this, you can do this. And we all have to fumble around and go, I don't get it. Not that they don't know what they're doing, but a lot of times it's the next generation that's got to find a training progression. Yeah, yeah. You need to be able to, like, find a way to be able to fit right. it and it, it. As you know, from the Philippines, last guys, they never had an actual written – Dieter. Dieter gets credit because he took everything from Ernesto and everything. He actually, you know, granted it's a long program, but he wrote it all out. You have to do this. So because I teach law enforcement, especially military, and I only have six, you know, the, as we talked to crimped, you know, I have an eight hour day to teach them everything, six hours of actual training, and then I don't see them again. So I had to come up with a very simple training. So like Wing Chun, I only have three forms, my fourth yeah. one, like the, the dummy form, which is five, two, four on the low line. So I have low umbrella to go with my high umbrella, you know, and I, and I have perspectives. Because of Remy, as you and I, you're left handed, like I was. That, yeah, you know, Remy used his left hand to do right handed motions, he did not do left handed motions with his left hand. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the guy doing right hand would have to do something else. So, we'd be banging away the right hand, he changed hands. We never stopped, 
Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we couldn't tell it was in his left hand, except it was slightly off. Different perspective. So one time he showed me disarms. He goes, oh, problem, you know, it's a little backwards. It doesn't work the same. So in his honor, standard is right to right. Backwards to me, which is for us good guy left-handers who have to deal with right-handers. Yeah. And uh, Retzel Holzer from, uh, you know, the Bern Tactical Police came from Switzerland. The learner goes, do you teach left hand? I said, yes. He said, put it in your right hand. And go, I knew that. I said, no, no. You don't know what I'm going to do. Put it in your right hand and I'll show you how to use your, just quickly, how to use your left hand to do right-handed motions to deal with a right-hander. Oh, that's great. And then he stayed on for years training with me. And I said, then left hand is mirror image. Like yeah. you stand and look in a mirror, it just translates it. And then backwards, backwards is me using my right hand to do left-handed motions against a natural left-hander. Only four possible perspectives. And I got that from Remy. Bill, where'd you get the other stuff? I said, because in talk, Remy used to say, if your right hand can do it, so can your left. So, it, yeah, yeah. And people thought he meant you have a one on this side and a one on that side. You can't have two number ones. This is a one. When I switch it to a left hand, they're actually doing a number two to a natural left hand that could open the close. So it's a negative integer. They think it's a one to them because it's their primary, as you would do. But in yeah. real, to all the rest of us, oh, it's a two. Mm -hmm. He went, oh, well, how'd you get it? Because in the middle of that, he said, you, if your right hand can do it, so can your left. And he'd say, you have to know the mirror. I said, if he yeah. made those two separate categories, they must be separate motions. And they are. And that led me to adding the last one. Remy goes, well, problem. how did you get that? I said, well, I took the reverse, the backwards of your backwards. You said backwards using my left hand to do right hand in motion. So backwards, backwards is I use my right hand against a natural yeah, left hand yeah. to do left hand in motions. And, you know, the blessing was that he went, oh, my God, you supercharged on these and you found a better way. But he's always trying to find an easier way to mm, teach it. Mm, mm, you know, a lot mm. of FMA guys used to laugh at modern Arnis because Remy – you know, did everything off Sinawali and off the flow drill and went, there's more to it. Well, you know, if you can do that stuff, you can build on anything rather yeah, than all the true. fancy complicated stuff. So, and that also came to my knives. How hard is it? Ball peen hammer someone to use it like a doula with doula and jam. Oh, well, all the punching, all our limb destroy. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. So, you know, that's where it fits in with my tools. And, you know, I corrupt people one at a time so now that i've got you hypnotized that you know, <laughs> you know, you'll you know like and darren darren's always showing people going oh look at bram's knives over there i know wow this has been a very excellent uh interview with you jim especially showing about the showing about the lapu lapu corto well, the desang good yeah and we're looking forward to the re-release of the abanico <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I got a bunch of people. Oh, and by the way, you know, I, I didn't, um, you know, because the Presas Bolo disappeared a long time ago, and I've been named by the Filipino government, the Presas family, as a guardian of the legacy of Bolo and of the mm. Presas Bolo. I, you know, remake them, and I found that, I think I wow. told you last night, the family that made them. So we do Bolo, and I do knife. People go, why do you do Bolo? As you and I talked about, everybody carries machetes. They're anywhere. So a machete is a de-evolution of a fighting big knife. So I still teach bolo practicality, mm. and I teach folding knives. And I leave stick work to everybody else. Mm. I've got a question about the bolo. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, do you teach it as a hacking tool or as a slicing tool? I use it as a slicing tool, and I'm actually up close. I use it to trap and redirect. And All I right, do okay. chef cuts because I, I took for seriously what Remy said. If I can touch you, you're cut already. So I do mm -hmm. chi sao or um, sort of hubud, and the blade never leaves you. And I'm a big one. I'll use the little – I'll use the bolo knife because it's easier to see. So yeah. I use abanico. So when you cut at me, I use the flat of the blade to stop the blade coming in because mm -hmm. you catch your blade here. If we do edge to edge, we're going to chip our blade. Exactly. So I do abanico. If I do abanico and I push abanico, oh, that turns you into typical number one disarm. And when I come back up for that arcing slice cut underneath, that pops the disarm out. Oh, I can pass your arm away, and now I can trap in an arm bar, mm. and I roll it on you as long as I can touch you. I'll do it. 
On a two, I do the same thing. Two's coming in. I put the flat there. Bang, bang, half cut. Okay, when I'm there, oh, if I drop the tip, that's just like a stick. I come up, your hand's there. I just take your hand off the tool, and then I can slide up your arm, and I take it. Because anybody can dance and try hacking. It's not yeah. a hacking tool. And I tell people, my, my bolos are sharp, and I hack at the, the swim noodles, and nothing happens. And then while I'm talking, I don't have a live one here. I sit there and do this gently. And the slice is going to go, I thought it wasn't sharp. <clears throat> Knives are not hacking tools. It's All not right. a chopper. They're matter separators. They're an edge designed to cut flesh. And they come from, you know, 2.9 million years ago. And, you know, obsidian blades and stone wow. blades, they're designed. There's no strength laterally. They're cutters. They weren't designed. There's no fabric back then. There's no rope. Nobody's hacking. They're learning to do what? It's the first Slicing. production tool, first tool mankind ever made. We didn't invent the stick. We invented this. And I had to learn how to nap it. And I learned to take a mother stone and make others. Then I taught Quaka who came and taught you. It's the first production knife. And humanoids used them, not humans. Humanoids. And this is this one's made out of flint. And Oh, yeah. So I learned to do what? And there's the, oh, that typical lock it in so I can go. They're not made to hack. Mm. Knives are an edge that separates matter. And if you, when I went to school, they showed us an inclined plane. Well, two inclined planes put back to back become a wedge and they separate matter. And that's what this is. It's a, uh, okay. That's how you can, those guys do the trick and they walk on the edges or they grab blades because yeah. they're sharp. But they're pushing down on them, hacking. It's not designed for that. But if you right. slide down the edge, let me get something that's really sharp. If I'm on the edge, big trouble. I hack with it, nothing. Yeah, that's nothing. They're not designed for hacking. Yeah, what about an, an axe? An axe is a different kind of tool with a different kind of edge. And you yeah. have to keep it at a, you know, a 20 to, a, you know, a 40 degree. End. And I'm still wedging and I, I take pieces out and I wear that edge off. Mm -hmm. But yes. And people try to make battle axes and say, oh, I can fight with them. Tomahawk style or yeah, do Filipino stuff. Well, if I'm up by the head and I have the wrong edge on it, I cannot use it like a knife. It's not designed for it. It's at the so, same rate, yes. Yeah, so in answer to your question, I don't teach it. Like some people, they're dueling. We won't say mm. that famous person from Canada who duels says that you got to be out here with all that room because in real, I don't have that room. And I know the bad guy's always attacking. So I've taught my officers, we hide behind the abanico. Why? Mm. Because it comes up and I can cover both corners rather than can I move my arm or shift. Yeah. Very yeah. easy to do and I couldn't see it because I think I told you my logo is actually Abanico double action which you can print up yes. later that mm. is the cut Abanico Abanico Fullerette back up and Remy used to do Abanico to intercept and I went ah I turned bang flat on my blade to catch your edge so I don't hurt my edge and then my edge is always oriented towards you and all I have to do is touch you if you come at me oh that's a chef cut if I touch you and you back away and I just got it, that's a slice cut. And all I did was mm -hmm. touch you. And if I reach out and touch you, well, you're cut already. And Remy yeah. used to go, oh, remember, if you touch him, he's cut already. You must know where the sharp is. Don't yes. touch the sharp. You must run the sharp. And people go, what do you mean run the sharp? Well, I, I run the sharp. Anyways, that's a little side right. about the bolo. Thank you. Thank you very much for the clarification, Kuyap Bram. You're very okay. welcome. Well, it's two hours. <laughs> that, that went that went too quickly. So um, to wrap up the interview, um, would you be able to tell the people again, uh, the, the viewers or everybody in FMA discussion, how to get uh, your uh, Lapu-Lapu Cortos, your Desangutes, and also 
where to basically get your online program. Okay. <clears throat> if they go to www.cssd-sc.com, that has all my knives and links to everything else. If they go to, and it's long, Bram Frank Modular training.com that has all my online certification programs which are actually full video programs and written programs and then live check-ins with me to get my learn the crimped the deaths on good my modular program my bolo program in case you can't get me i do run zoom and i'm willing to do zoom private lessons and then at bram frank dot pivot like you pivot something pivot dot com that has all my videos and seminars that were videotaped. And you can, some of them are free downloads, others are rental downloads, or you can rent, you know, buy them. So those are the three sites. Um, for those who are in Europe and other countries, we might have to find a U.S. address to be shipped to to have someone bring it to you because I don't want the tools, you know, mm. taken by customs. Yeah. That's and again, true. my tools, if you live in other countries, the safest thing to carry for self-defense is your impact rescue tool. You notice I always talk about I don't make knives. I make two edge tools. Yes. Other people make knives. My tools actually serve a purpose. They're not just for I know. I kill somebody. Anyways, yeah. so that's the basic of where it's at. Thank you very much, Kuya Bram. You're very welcome, Tom. Thank you. And thank you, everyone listening. Thank you, Kwaku, for thank you, Kwaku, for, for assisting. Thing. <laughs> These are actually got the phone to reboot because I didn't know what to do. I'm in there. I'd have no idea. Yeah. Anyways. But yeah. Excellent demo. Excellent demo. All right. Uh, man, I'm you on, you know, anytime you want me, we can come back. And if you guys, if we yeah. want to sponsor a Zoom class, dude, you guys want my guys here to learn crimped on Zoom and even get Darren, you know, we, we can do a Zoom class too. Why not? Yeah. We'll talk about it. Okay. I'll message you. Okay. And excellent. I'm interested Thank to you. do the, the lessons. As You're well. very welcome. Have a great night and be safe. Okay. Thank okay. you very much, Kriya. Okay. Bye. bye bye. Stay safe, guys. Thank you. Right. So, guys, thank you very much for staying with us for two hours. And I hope you enjoyed the interview and learned quite a lot from um, uh, Jim Bram Frank with regards to the Lapo Lapo Corto and the Desangut. Okay. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this this uh, particular conversation with him and i do hope that you enjoyed it too um so that's gonna be it for episode 333 so i think uh, dean has already posted uh, some um guests for october and i'm going to also add mine so um, this is it for episode 333 this is guru tom Pena, and i'll see you next time guys stay safe and especially for those who are in florida stay safe